Hey, hey, thanks for watching DD Crow with my favorite grimmer on YouTube. I'm at my house right now and I have a, those are the kennels set up right now. So we got, we've been calling him Brownie. We've got Brownie. Hey, Brownie. Hey. Hey, Brownie, what are you doing? We've been calling him Brownie. I've, I'm pretty sure I'm keeping him. Then we've got, you know, Saki. She's chilling. It's real hot outside, so he's just chilling. We got Brownie his own kennel right there. It's a pretty big one. Uh, these ones I've actually had since I had Suey and Duke. They don't make them this quality anymore. Actually, Suey and Duke chewed this up when they were younger. Those can, those were what the, you had to get those in order to... Faith, what are you doing, me? See, they're in there because they want to be in there, okay? But the, these kennels, you actually had to have big kennels like that, strong, strong, to go from Germany to the United States. Those were a requirement. So this kennel is a great kennel to use, but you're not going to use that for any shipment of a pet. It needs to be in this kind of construction. So if you need a kennel, please let me know. I'll send you a link to uh, get a kennel depending on the breed you have. But I'm going to show you an example of just in general how... Hey Brownie, you want to go outside? Come on, let's go outside. Go outside. Go. Go outside. Go. Go outside. You got it. You guys want to go outside? Go. Out. 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 Go outside. Out. Go outside. She, is he blocking the door for you? Go. Go. Go on the kennel. I mean, go. Come on, Saki. Go outside. Go outside, good girl. Faith, out, 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 out. So, right there you can see, if you have the same key words that you use all the time, that's training, okay? And my dogs know. They're just kind of starting to learn, uh, learn Brownie and get used to him being in the household. But they're out there. She's about to come in. Let's scare her. Let's scare her. Hey! What happened? Where are you going? <laughs> what happened? Where are you going? All right. So come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, Faith. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come. Okay, ready? Show everyone you know how to get in the kennel by yourself. Get ready. Go. Kennel. Kennel. Good girl. Okay, so the whole point of this video, the whole point is if you need a kennel, let me know. All dogs, in my opinion, should be kenneled, crate trained, however you want to call it. Uh, there's going to be reasons and things that come about in your life that you're going to wish your dog was kennel trained. Okay, just like you should wish your dog could jump up into a vehicle, jump up on a truck. I mean, there, there's training you should do if you have a, dip, depending on the size pet you have. To me, it is very important to have a kennel, a kennel training situation done, okay? So I had Kim, a good friend of mine from YouTube. Hi, Kim. She wrote me uh, yesterday a long email, and then she explained kind of how her, she has two dogs. She has, I think, how many do you have? Five altogether or four altogether? But she has two dogs, it, it seems like in the middle of the night, start to do their own thing. They get into some, they get into rambunctiousness and get into some stuff and kind of tear stuff up. Whether it's furniture, whether it's whatever. If you have pets like that, I'm going to tell you a couple stories. I hope my, my battery is blinking, but... I'm gonna tell you a couple stories that are important. One, Suey uh, on my YouTube channel, he's gone now, but Shih Tzu Pekingese Mix, I had him, he died at 15, the love of my life. And he, when he got older, okay, so he, they came, Suey and Duke, I bought these for them, the kennels, from Germany, transported them to the US, and those kennels have been a, like a lifesaver. If I say kennel, they would get in, I could transport them, move them into vehicles, I mean, it was never a problem. One of the key things on the transfer from Germany to Guam was that I sent my pets to my parents for them to care for. They arrived in the kennel. My parents took the kennels home. You know, they, my, they had met my mom and my sister one time, but that was all they knew. But they knew the kennel as their home. They felt safe. So military members, if you have a, a crate training system going on that's going to be a very beneficial to you and your pets so Sue and duke arrived at my parents house they were able to take them from the airport to the house they felt safe in their kennel my mom told me a long time ago when when this time was happening she was like it, it, that 
that was their home. They knew to go back in the kennel. Like that's they went to sleep in the kennel. They learned that all on their own. So now, uh, at the time when he when Suey got really old, he uh, him and Duke both had heart problems. And if they weren't kennel trained, I, I made a little bit of mistakes. I let them get real. The kennels were always here. Matter of fact, they were in the same place they are here for Faith and Saki. They were always here for them. And I'm um, sorry. I gotta say, they, I wasn't as strict as they got older. If I said kennel, they knew what it was, but at night when we went to sleep, it wasn't like they had to sleep in their kennel. So I feel like I kind of went wrong there, okay? I'm not saying you can't snuggle with your dogs, which is where I'm, I gotta tell myself that sometimes. Dee Dee, it's not that you can't snuggle with your dogs, it's about having balance. Remember I talked about balance and other things? having a balanced rotation of some, some nights they should sleep in a kennel. Some nights they should, they can sleep with you. Some nights they can sleep in the kennel, right? So there's a rotation of like, don't forget that this is your kennel to sleep in. You should feel safe in there. You shouldn't whine and bark all night long. It should be that this is where you're going to sleep tonight. So as a dog gets older, you want to have that routine down. And let me tell you why. So the messed up part that I did was I didn't have them sleeping in their kennel every night okay that could be some good pros and cons could there be a fire and then they're stuck in the kennel yeah could there be a fire and then I was able to take the kennel and run outside yes that would have been great right could there be all these things that life happens right that you cannot anticipate ha you can't plan for happening we talked about this so you take an animal and at Suey's age, 15, 14, 13, 14, 15, he's, he outlived Duke and they're both the same litter because we got his heart disease meds beforehand because he, they both had heart murmurs at like the age of four or five. So we watched that as they got older, the heart murmurs got worse. Duke was the first one to transition. Personally, I think that Duke was, uh, had a night where he was playing too much and that like triggered it all. That set everything, it made his heart beat too fast and then right after that night, it just went downhill for him. I think that uh, someone else was playing with him and I think that that set him off. And that's why I'll tell like David, like don't rough up the girls because they're older. Don't run them around like, don't do that. Don't hyper them up because someone just not having common sense and understanding like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're actually pretty old. Don't do that to them. Don't get them pissed off. Don't work, you know, because you don't know what's going to set that over the ed edge, which is why in my grooming salon, we won't blow dry certain ages. I will say, no, I don't want to, or I'll make that call like, hmm, I don't have a good feeling we're not going to blow dry. That's the reason, because I know that little things can set the dog over the edge. Things you can't see, the, the beat of their heart, okay? things that I should be aware of because this is my job. This is my livelihood. This is what I do. I try to look at what's going on with the animal. Okay. Cause it all comes together in the end. So Suey got older. He was on meds. He was in heart failure. He was like serious in heart failure. And one, he loved to sleep with me and he, it, he could not not sleep with me. So I put him in a cage a couple times. He would like just scream. I mean, and I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I've never heard him like that. But because I didn't stick with the stick to my guns, I didn't want him screaming at 14, 15 years old. I didn't want him sleeping without me. There was a uh, one, one or maybe a, twice, but the second time, or if it was, a, I can't remember exactly. But he jumped off the bed in the middle of the night, and I felt him, and I knew he was f more fragile. And you know, our our beds are taller. The older we get, the taller the bed seems to get. So he jumps off the bed and I just barely grabbed his leg and boom, he hit the ground. And I have tile floors, just like I do at the salon, which is why a groom loop is important. But I have tile floors. You hit this floor, what are you doing? That's your head and your chin and you're gonna buckle. Oh, he wasn't the same after that. Sorry, sorry you guys, make sure you're seeing me. He wasn't the same after jumping off the bed at four in the morning and I'm grabbing his leg like I felt it all happening. Like I grabbed his leg, he barely hit, but he still hit enough. So at that point I realized, okay, you can't sleep on the bed anymore. I was like, we, I'm, I don't care, I'm not chanting it again. It's over, this is over. I'm not worrying about you at four in the morning. I can't get any sleep. Senior pet care is not easy, which is why I know so much about it. I went through Sally who was a deaf, deaf chihuahua and deaf and blind by the time she passed away I, I only gave her a senior home because a friend of mine worked at the shelter and was like hey Didi, we confiscated 17 senior ch 17 chihuahuas four or five of them are ser seriously old will you pick one up and give her a retirement home 
And I was like, heck yeah, she might be around a couple years. She outlived Suey and Duke. She outlived all the dogs I had at the time, and I couldn't believe it. Chihuahuas have a very long, they could put it, they have so far to me have had the longest life that I've been around with, with dogs, longest lifespan. So I'm like, wow, you know, if I had only kept Suey kenneled at night, then we would have never had the situation where he's whining and doing all this stuff because he wanted to be with mommy. I, I get it. I loved him. I love him. You know, I loved him so much that it was traumatic for me to go through him um, hitting the floor. Okay. So you will learn through an animal's an animal an animal should be able to jump an animal should be able to you know have that jumping around that's what animals do but after an animal gets so old there's things that you can't fix after they've hurt themselves so you need to be able to make some choices which you may not like it you may not like the fact that he has to sleep on the floor next to you now you may not like the fact that you should sleep on the floor next to him while he's going through his last two years with you. You may not like the adjustments that you have to make, but if these are your animals and you love them, then you will make those adjustments for the safety of your pets, okay? So the kennels, I'm telling Kim this, um, and I would take everything so seriously. Kennels are so important because, next thing, so Kim wants to know what she should do. Should she go ahead and start trying to kennel her dogs now at night or what should she do? Should she get some kennels? So it's gonna be really based off the pet and the experience. You're gonna have to go through some training. You're gonna have to get them used to it. When I first got Faith, she did not know what a kennel was. Matter of fact, she did not like anything. You could lean towards her and she would leave. She would book it. I had to train her to come to me with, I didn't use treats that day. We stood outside for until she got it. Cause I had taken Faith to a, a dog park and it took me an hour to get her to come back to me. She, I would walk and she would run. I would walk and she would run. I would run after her and she'd run faster. I was like, Did, we walked in circles, this really big dog park. And I was like, we are not doing that again. I can't even remember how I manipulated her to come to me. I think it was like, come on, come on. I got her to come close to me after a whole hour of walking around the, the uh, dog park trying to get her to come to me. So at that point I was like, okay, we are not doing that again. We got home that night and I was like, you are going to learn how to come to me. And so I taught her this trick. If I tap my knee, she will come to me. I won't run after her at all. If you run after certain dogs, they will run, keep running. Even if your dog books it out of your house, you don't run after that dog. It's really hard not to. You don't run after the dog. You just get in your car, you drive out to your dog and you flew, just fly open the door and the dog usually jumps right in. You don't even have to say anything. You just throw open the door. Um, so we got home that night. I trained Faith just tapping on my knee over and over. I tapped my knee. She was on a leash. I tapped my knee, pulled her close, let her jump on it. Love and love and love. Pushed her back a little bit, did let her do it again over and over. Now, if I just bend down on my knee, even if she like books it outside on accident because she's a booker, I just go, hey, come here. I, I just squat down, tap my knee. She comes right over, put the leash on, right? That rarely has happened, but if she tries to get out, because I have, I have gates that protect from that. There's a gate right there trying to protect her not to book it, to run out. Set up your safety areas that contain your pets if they're bookers. But this is a lot more video than the just kennels, isn't it? So should you do that, Kim? Yes, you should. You should get some kennels. You should get them accl acclimated and used to the kennels. You might have to lock them in there and let them scream and cry for nights and nights and nights and let them get through that because don't take them out and rescue them. You might have to go through it uh, many nights. I'm not sure. It depends on the age of your pet. With Suey, he was, uh, go, he was on his last days. I didn't do it. I didn't push him to stay in the kennel after he had gotten serious heart disease and he started having a little bit of dementia. I didn't push him through that. But if I had done that years before, overnight stays in his kennel, with him like in the same room maybe, you know, not that he needed to be by him. It's not that, it's about you and your kennel. You can see me, I can see you. It's time to go night night, go night night. If the dog is gonna scream and cry, you might have to put that pet in another room while they go through that. You might try sometimes to cover the kennel with a blanket, but just a breathable one, one that can be breathed through. You're not suffocating anybody. But the kenneling is very important. Would I just go ahead and try to kennel them? Yeah, it comes down to like another story. So a couple houses down, there was a lady I was pet sitting for and she's moved now, she doesn't live there. But at the time uh, that I was pet sitting, 
I knew, learned her dogs and I would groom her dogs every now and then. She would also groom her own dogs herself. Well, they went on, they, no, it wasn't even, they've had some really crappy experiences pet sitting, but they, it was a husband and wife and they were just whatever, you know, they were out for the day. They got home and one of their Shih Tzus had eaten, eaten something. Okay, got into something. I'm not saying you can't leave your pets running around. I'm just saying a pet could, at night, like you're saying, your pets got it, get into something, tear stuff up. You might want to have some precautionary measures taken in place because things like this can happen that I'm about to tell you. So they go leave for the day. Let's just say they go shopping. They come back. Their pet has eaten something. They, the, the dog is not feeling well. They go find out, you know, they go to the veterinarian. They do this and that. They do the x-rays. They do this, da, da, da. That dog died that evening. The dog had eaten the pet parents' retainer. Like, not even a retainer, a, a sleeping guard the husband used so that he wouldn't grind his teeth at night. It was just laying on, the, on top of the bed, which is a really high bed. The dog could still get up there and then got it off of their little coffee table next to the bed, nightstand, and ate it. So it, it, it just, I want you to understand, like, your dog can eat anything if you're not watching it, the animal. And you're, you need to be aware of that. But at night while you're sleeping, you can't be aware of everything. If your pets are getting into something in the very late at night and you don't know about it, one day they're going to get into something that's a big deal. Okay? Right Let me now, make sure. Saki and Faith have been trying to get out. They got out of our yard twice, you know, the backyard. I mean, they were literally spending hours digging. Got into our side yard, a neighbor's yard over here. I mean, like, what are you guys doing? It started after we started digging our garden. Like, I don't know, Faith got so smart. She's like, oh, hmm, you guys are digging? Shoot, I could dig. You know, like maybe she wants to help out. But she's digging out. So she, they've dug, um, which is why I wanted to kind of do this on camera. They've dug some spots that, that are, may have made us worry. We don't want to go to work and worry. So check out this spot right here, man. I cleaned it up yesterday. But they, they dug that hole. I mean, there's a piece of wood there, so they won't. They just tore that up trying to get out they went over here and tore that up over here and then what else they this is they got out there that's why we, they we put these down because they got out there there was a hole there's a hole right here um you know okay let me go over here what's up brownie brownie loves to follow me around check out this hole they're digging they dug down to the sprinkler pipes here we, so we put some brick right there as a temporary, but you know what? Look, digging all, this is all digging right here. They broke a hole right there and that, I mean, like, what I'm saying is, is that if you are not able, we have cameras all through, inside and outside so of the house. So my point is, is that we know, we have cameras inside and outside, so we're watching everything, you know, we, we see what's happening, we know what's happening, and we cannot risk our dogs getting out. So right now, they're kenneled every day. Uh, they have a doggy door they can go in and out, but if I can't, you can't trust your dogs, you need to contain them. And that's what I've chosen to do. So they're kenneled. So I know this has been a long story, a lot of talking, and I'm really sorry for that. Let me just close it up. If you find that you have reason to kennel your pets, the safest thing to do is kennel them. Uh, I wouldn't, they have bedding in there. If you have a dog that tears everything up and eats it up, no bedding. Unfortunately, you can't trust them. Any dog that's tearing up bedding and eating it could potentially have a big problem when you get home. It may not even be alive when you get home. So I don't leave water in the cage. Uh, if the if house is cool. They're kenneled. And then when I get home, we let them out. You know what I mean? So kennel your pets. Protect your pets. If you want your pets to live a long life, kennel your pets. Don't leave them with toys or chews in their kennel. They need to be just in there alone or don't leave any kind of chews or anything unmonitored with an animal ever. I don't care what you've bought. I don't care if it's a bully stick. I don't care anything. Anything can get stuck somewhere that it's not supposed to if you're not monitoring your pet while he or she is chewing at it. So empty kennel, maybe some bedding if they don't tear it up. My girls don't tear those up. So they have bedding and no, no water. The reason why is because you leave water, they're gonna pee all in there if, you, if they're not able to hold themselves, okay? So now you just created a whole, they can drink water when you get home from work, right? So definitely kennel your pets, protect your pets, get them used to that so that when they get really old and they do have heart disease, when they do jump off the couch and pull their back and have an injury, it isn't so hard on them to get them to stay in a kennel and understand why they have to be in a kennel. 
I had Duke, he jumped off the couch at right before he passed away, like a year before he passed away, 10 months before he had passed away. He already had heart disease. He was coughing really bad, really hard to breathe because of the collapsed trachea from the heart disease. Enlarged heart helped him. The enlarged heart was hitting his esophagus and his trachea, excuse me, his trachea, which was leading up to his esophagus damage. And that, that made there be collapsed trachea. So collapsed trachea, hard to breathe. He's already going through all that. And then he jumps off the couch at an old age and hurts his, injures his back. Oh gosh, man, it was so hard to, for, it was so hard on us too. It was like during Thanksgiving and Christmas, the last Thanksgiving and Christmas of his life, he had to be pinned up he, and he didn't want to. He was sad about it. And it was one, just, a, just a really bad memory, you know, in your head. Like, wow, your baby's in a crate for months because he wouldn't, Dogs are dogs. They're not going to be like, oh, I'm injured. He's going to have fun and do his thing and jump back up on the couch and, and injure himself some more. So he was on bed rest, which is in a dog's life. What is bed rest? Bed rest is containment. You only have so much room. If we go outside to pee, you're on a leash so I can monitor how much you're jumping. Like you cannot be jumping and running all over the place. So you're going to hurt yourself and not let the injury repair. So those few months where he was, two months where he was in, the pinned area, the, the kennel, he wasn't happy. And it made it really tough on me and really tough on him. If he knew his kennel and slept in his kennel like he should have been doing, then it would have been easier for him in his old age to understand that he was not crated because he wasn't wanting to be around. You know what I mean? Like he was crated because of his injuries and because of containment, just trying to control his environment. So it was really tough. It was, it was a really tough loss. Duke was the first one I lost. And because of that, the medical everything all together is just a very very hard loss and um, i just miss him dearly i will miss him forever but thanks for watching dd crow with my favorite groomer on youtube this is to answer kim's question on kenneling definitely kennel your pets there's the reasons why there's many more but i think i've talked your ear off already <laughs> thanks for watching i appreciate you guys and get your kennel if you need a link to the kennel please email me at dede -D -E underscore grooms g-r-o-o-m-s at yahoo.com support us so, so we can keep on doing what we do thanks bye